Hi, this is Anna with Fiber Designs by Anne. I hope you enjoy this part five in my textile coloring series. We'll be using Jacquard textile colors again, and this time we'll be adding Neo Color 2 wax pastels. You want to make sure your work surface is protected and that you might want to wear something that can get paint on it because at some point toward the end of this video, the technique might be a little more splashy. We'll be using white 100% cotton fabric and I have freezer paper. We're we'll using Neo Color 2 wax pastels and I'm going to use metallic. I may use some that's not metallic, but right now I'm going to use metallic Jacquard Textile Lumiere's beautiful buttery paint. I have some round brushes that I can load up pretty well and a couple containers for mixing paint. I have a mist bottle, some extra water. When you, you, when you do the, um, when you add the fabric to the freezer paper, first take your freezer paper, have it cut just a little bigger than your fabric, and take it to the ironing board. Make sure the shiny side is always away from the iron and down, and iron it, just the freezer paper, with a hot dry iron, and it will shrink a little bit. And that's, uh, we want that to happen now instead of later. So then after you do that, peel it off of your ironing surface, lay your fabric on your ironing surface, and then put the freezer paper on top of it. It would fit like mine does here. Or it can be, it can, they can be off a little bit. And then press it really well, uh, so you're gonna have it like this, so that the freezer paper paper side is up. Press it really, really well, and this has a little bit of wrinkles, I'm not sure why. Uh, it's only gonna add texture, and I'm good with that. You can press it till it's really smooth. So you just want that to support, stabilize, just give you more stability as you're, as you're working. You want to make sure that your wax pastels are dry. And I usually only use one for this technique, but I'm going to try two and see what happens today. You'll want to have some paint mixed up, so I'm going to do that here. This is that same situation where you want to get your paint the right consistency. So it might take some trial and error to figure out what works best. But as with most of these little samples, it takes very little paint. With the Neo Color 2s, it can look beautiful on here as you're working. You'll see what it does. But it will dry lighter. Sometimes because of how wet you have your material, your fabric, it will blend out more and really be so light when it's dry you hardly see your design. If that happens, sometimes it's beautiful if you're going to do more layers on top of it and other paints, but if that bothers you, go ahead and do it again. Neo color over it again, add some paint wash again. Just experiment and explore because it'll be, it's very nice light, not a heavy uh, paper, uh, fabric, excuse me, when you're done, so you can still add layers to it. I like to use these pieces in, um, well, I don't do journal pages, but they'd be great for journal pages, but collage. I'm going to take a little bit of my water, and instead of looking down there, I'm going to look and see how, at the, my bottle tip, whoops, at my bottle tip, so I can tell how much I'm putting in, instead of looking down into the container. I want this to be a little heavier than a wash. The metallic is, it seems to be a heavier paint, which I guess makes sense. That's not, I want it a little bit thinner than that. So if you're using a regular paint, which by all means you can do that, that was probably too generous, but that's, it'll work, it'll work. Um, a regular paint will behave differently probably than the metallics. And metallics are different too. I've done this with the Jacquard, which does keep my fabric softer uh, it's, it also behaves a little differently when it hits the fabric. All of this is experimenting. I'll just give you the ideas with the techniques, and then you can just play, play, play. So I have this metallic. I think it's just a regular gold, oh, bright gold, mixed up, and it's a little thicker than milk, maybe, maybe cream. Now I'm going to take my Neo Colors and I'm going to do 
ovals. You can do any shape you want. Sometimes, well, I'll show you a piece that's a little more industrial looking later, but depending on the colors, you can do different shapes that will invoke different feelings. I like to do flowery kind of things, so that's what's going to, not always, but that's what I'm going to go for in this. So I'm just going to randomly, make sure your nail color twos are very sharp if you're doing a, certain, a specific shape. I'm just going to randomly put these uh, oval, ovalish circles around, change the size a little bit. I'm pushing pretty hard. I want the pigment to go out on the down on the fabric. Make sure you have the fabric side up. I've done this accidentally and realized I was drawing on the freezer paper. Not what you want to do. Well, these look a little bit formal, but for this it'll be just fine. Now I'm going to take my purple and I'm going to go around that. Stronger colors usually show more even in the end. When the neo colors go on dry fabric, they're softer, they're more dull, but you'll see what happens when they hit. Well, you could take this right now and just spray water on it and see what it does. That could be fun. But when I put the paint on there, especially metallic, it will do different things. Like I said, you can use regular paint. It does not have to be metallic. Okay, we'll see what happens. Also, when the fabric is wet, these draw really easy on wet fabric, and they'll start to do something right away. I like to kind of plan it out and when I'm using, um, that's when I'm using the dry fabric. So I have a little more idea, a little more control of the design, but you only have so much control. Now I'm going to take my, and be sure you stir your paint because you can see it separates with the binder or the metallic or what separates, but, and I may, once I put this down, if it doesn't move, then I am going to put a little more water. It's kind of thick, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to show you a bonus technique at the end of this video, and that will, this would probably work really well for that. In fact, I can just tell, I can tell, get, get a feel for it, I can tell it's not quite... I thought I put too much, but it feels a little too thick for me. It's a fine line between being too thick and too thin. Okay, here we go. And I can tell that that's too thick. Now I could drop water right on there, but I'm going to... Hmm, let's see. I'm going to hit it again, or you could I could spray that. You can see what's starting to happen. I am going to spray these because of that's still a little too heavy. It it seems like it's fine, but it's you can see what's happening. Not quite. Also, if your place is tilted, like my paper's got a little bump, bump under it, buckle under it, it will affect which way it bleeds. Where you lay this down on it, try to get in the center, but I'm not stead that steady a hand. And you can go back over, let's do this again. You can put them really close to your designs, really shapes really close together so that they totally blend into each other, which leaves it, makes a really beautiful, um, can make a really beautiful design. You can help it out a little bit with the brush, but realize when you get in the nail color, it's going to put, put uh, pigment on your brush so it may color your paint. Just 
There's just a fine line between getting too, getting it too wet and not wet enough. And as you can see, even though I've done this many, many, many times, it's still, but the one cool thing about this, it's still a experiment. Uh, when this stops on my dry fabric, when I apply more paint or water, that ring will probably still stay there. So I really love that that's happening. I'm gonna just put a little more and push it out a little bit more. Just gently. So then you can get another ring outside of that first one. And if you don't want more metallic, just use water and a paintbrush. If I had taken the purple and done little spikes sticking out, then it would have looked a little more like flowers. And when this is, I don't usually pull the metallic out like that, but it's so pretty. When it's wet like that, they're all pretty strong, but you can go back over. It's easier when it's not metallic paint. Metallic kind of picks up on the, on the neo color, and that was a very shaky circle. So I could hit these with water. I can go in and draw more. I could bring another color in. I think I'll just do a little more over some of these. I'm going to set this one aside and we'll do one more and then I'll show you another quick little technique. Okay, this will be maybe a little more industrial feel or uh, grunge maybe. And I'm using a turquoise. I'm actually going to pour it into my leftover gold. And I have, uh, that's the jacquard textile color. And I have a black and a dark brown neo color past wax pastel. So the gold in this turquoise is making kind of a pretty color. That's a really thirsty fabric, so my bottle just dripped on it. But this isn't anything in particular. This is, like I said, kind of grunge. So I'm learning, I never use this fabric, and it really wants a wash. So 
So I could spritz everything and then apply the wash, the painted wash spritz with just clear water, but I'm just gonna water down the paint. You can do it reverse so that you apply the, this fabric might be a bit better candidate for this, getting the paint, laying the paint all down on the fabric. And then, I'm gonna get all the edges here. And then, even if you use a, another color, I'm gonna turn this, the other potential. If you lay down some white, Just that fast you have a little bit of a sky or ocean. And tilting it, you can get it to move. It's still very wet. So you can see how back here you're getting a lot a lot of different textures and coloring from just working the paint into the wax pastel a little differently where I waited to put the the paint was here and not there and then I put more over it so it's you get more layering going on so it works really really well in uh, pieces that you want to add some texture and elements. I'm going to do another line and you can see how dark the, the pastel already becomes once you put it in onto wet. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you one last thing. I mixed up a little of the Jacquard Lumiere bright gold with some regular acrylic craft copper to make a copper color. You could use the copper alone. I think it, I like the results a little better when they're mixed. I've drawn some circles on my fabric and I'm back on my favorite fabric. And I'm going to take a very soppy round brush Put it in the center, close to the center of my black. Center, if you care. So this is the same technique we did before. Now I'm going to take this, and this is where consistency matters as far as, but I can't tell you. You have to sort of just try it out. So this is milk, probably milk consistency. I'm going to hold my soppy paint, my sop brush full of paint, very soppy, and I'm going to hold it up pretty high here. So you may not be able to see the whole thing. First off, I love what this is doing. And I'm going to splash. And this is the first time this has worked on camera. I have a lot of samples of it when I wasn't on camera. So I'm pretty excited about this. You can aim, but it's going to go where it's going to go. But the higher you go, the better the splash you'll get. 
if it's not giving you a splash it's turning into a solid circle it means your paint is too thin if it's just sitting there and not splashing or it's taking forever to drop off of your brush uh, that means your paint's too thick and I'm would rather I wasn't hitting on top of the other ones but you only have so much control of this once you get pretty high So that's my little fun other technique. Boy, I'd sure like to get one right. So I hold it over it. That's why you can't see it's in the way. Sorry about that. It's the only way to do this. I don't want it to drop too soon. If I can have a little bit of control. So I just love those splashes. I'll show you now some pieces that I've done using these different techniques that I showed in this part five. So this is just circles and then some lines of the black and the brown and then I put metallic. I'm not sure I love that. It's a little hard to see on camera. But uh, I like this piece just as it is with all the textures that are going on. But I may still cut it up and use it in other pieces. Some of these were too washed out so the or too thin paint so the splash didn't work. This was from part one in the series where I did the stencil leaf and I used a uh, goldenrod, I think was the wax pastel. Um, just put a few little circles of it and then I took some another color of the paint and I splashed over that. It's kind of wild, I'm not sure it's great, but it's a fun tr thing to use the different techniques. On this piece, the, I used gold in the center of the purplish neo color and then I used another metallic that was, I think it was a green, I'm not sure what the color, oh, it was this envy green. And when it spread, it leaves the gold in the center and then the, the color of the paint goes out. So I really like the way that turns out. This is another one that I was splashing on and I got kind of carried away. And you can see this was an acrylic uh, metallic uh, craft paint rather than Lumiere and it stays pretty blue um, can't really tell on here on other other pieces I've done the metallics looks just silver and totally separate from the color of the blue these are pieces that sort of didn't go really well this was just a pickup I was just using less leftover paint and splashing it around put a little neo color and I really like them. This has texture and I can only think that that was from the surface that it was on. I honestly can't tell you why this has this great texture, but I love it. And then there's little dots in here that I may have splattered. I know these were splatters. So these will be great for a lot of different things. Uh, I can already think of just quilting on some of them. And I have one more piece. This piece isn't quite finished. It's a little collage I did and uh, it's all fabrics. You can see the design on some of that. This of course is what we just did. This was a piece that I threw table salt on and uh, after I painted I put through table salt on it. These are fabric that I painted with black gesso so that it would be dull and then I stamped over it with um, regular acrylic either textile color or regular acrylic paints that that would be shiny so you can see a little bit of design in in there this was just torn and when I tore it it lifted some of the paint and left this white I like that a lot I'm gonna add some stitches to this and then I will show it to you I'm gonna hope to use some make other pieces with all the series pieces and be able to give you some examples of what you can do with all these things you've learned. There's at least one more series uh, part coming up. I hope that you'll stay tuned for that and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will and be sure and tap the bell so that you'll get notifications for my upcoming videos. This has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.